Today we're doing a wheel bearing on a 2015 Ford Explorer. I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips on how to diagnose a wheel bearing. So you probably already have an idea of where it is, front or back, but it's always a good idea to jack it up on all four corners and check each tire. So what you want to do, the easiest way to tell if a wheel bearing is bad is jack it up and rock it. Sometimes you can feel the tire will go like that which means that wheel bearing is rocking. But if you can't do that, there's another thing you can try. The quickest way to check a wheel bearing, um, if you're wondering which side it is, is get on a nice stretch of road where there's not gonna be any traffic and kind of do the little drive where you put load on. So if you turn to one direction, now I'm gonna turn left. I don't know if you can hear that, but it was loading up. Hear that wheel bearing start to make a little noise when I turn to the right the noise goes away so now that you've established which one is bad you're gonna to want to make sure you loosen up this nut now we can take the center cap out of the tire and drop it back to the ground but first we're just gonna put our impact on and see if we can spin that free we'll get the caliper out of the way and then pull the uh, rotor off and then we should be able to get into the wheel bearing pretty easy on this one so to make sure that you got good clearance because there's usually a little lift right here you just want to compress your front caliper a little bit just put a c-clamp on you can use two or you can go back and forth just really a little at a time but you can see right there i got a nice little gap that's going to make everything slide off easy i like to have a piece of wire all set to go and then there are just these bolts right there and there that hold the whole bracket assembly on. We'll finish taking those out and then just hang that up out of our way. With the caliber out of our way, we're gonna go ahead and get that nut off. All right, that's out of our way. On this particular model, there is a little uh, rotor retention bolt and so that's got a little Torx bit in it. I've already sprayed it. If these break off, you're gonna have a real bad day. All right. If your rotors have been on for any amount of time, you're gonna need to give it a few taps to get them to come off. Don't hit anywhere here unless you are replacing the rotors because you will bend them or damage them so just try to do little hits and just take your time We're gonna let this soak for just a little bit with that penetrating oil. And while it's soaking, we're gonna pull out that ABS sensor right there, get it out of the way so we don't damage anything when remo removing the wheel bearing. So just take your time with these uh, ABS sensors. I just kind of wiggled it back and forth and then just kind of up and down a little bit till I could just start to feel it move. I also hit it good with uh, some parts blaster to get it out, but take your time. You don't wanna wreck those. All right, I've been tapping on this, spraying it, tapping it, spraying it. I've let it sit for quite a while. Uh, it's still real stuck. So the bolts for this particular wheel bearing come in from the backside. Let me show you. So right there and there are two of them. You can see the other one on the other side and down there. So instead of trying to pound this one off, I'm just going to take those bolts out take the whole thing off and then I can get it off uh, by putting it up on some cribbing. Okay, all the wheel bearing bolts are loose. They don't wanna come out because of the boot right here. So they kind of hit it and I'm not gonna wiggle them around too much, no sense in that. But usually what happens, this piece here is aluminum. The wheel bearing housing right there is steel. And so these get stuck in. So we're gonna see what it's gonna take to get this off. Usually it requires a little finesse. And by finesse, I mean a hammer. Soaking that rotor, getting it 
really wet with parts blaster actually worked good. Uh, while I was tapping on trying to get the wheel bearing out, it actually kind of went poop and just came off on its own. So it didn't take much. Now you can see, looking at that, how tight that is. You can see where all the corrosion is. And now, now we can get in there just a little bit easier. So I'm going to spray this a whole bunch more, scrape that edge so that the penetrating oil can really get in there. And we're going to let it soak for a little bit. So I've been letting this sit. I've been tapping it, tapped it this way with a big round chisel, not this one tapped it back the other way to try to get that to turn just a little bit beat on it from the back side this way to just try to get it to pop so far none of that has worked so the next thing is a wedged chisel if you put the wedged chisel in here you want to make sure you put the flat up against the aluminum you don't want you want that to be flat and pushing you don't want it to go the other way because then it'll be driving into the aluminum so make sure you put it flat we're gonna give that a try. After a lot of pounding, getting a couple little wedges in, you can see I got it started. Should go pretty easy now, as long as I hit a little on one side, a little on the other, kind of try to work it out even. Hopefully you can see right there what happens. See that? That's aluminum oxidizing up against a steel piece of the bearing. So it just kind of seizes itself in. So that one's out. After all the pounding on it, it's really hard to say whether, you know, you can't really, oh yeah, spin it and see if it's bad. It's probably gonna be bad no matter what, because I just really pounded on a lot. But one thing we're gonna do with the new one is we're gonna go ahead and put some anti-seize on it. So that doesn't happen to the next guy that changes it. So we went through, cleaned all the surfaces up as good as possible, took a file and just kind of knocked off a couple of the little burrs um, from putting that chisel in there, it always leaves a little mark, but you can see that surface now is nice and clean. Usually now I would take something like this, an anti-seize lubricant and put it on. Um, but since what's happening here is a, a dielectric uh, reaction, I think that's what it's called, where two dissimilar metals, uh, you know, start corroding, I'm going to go ahead and try some of this. It's just a dielectric grease uh releasing agent and i'm gonna put that all over it we'll see how it works like i say i may never have to do this one again hopefully it helps the next guy okay you can see i put anti-seize on the bolts but on that surface with the two dissimilar metals meet i went ahead and put some of the other stuff so again we'll see how that works now we just slide it all back together Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to give you the torque specs. So they're saying the axle should be 184. The hub, which is the four bolts in the back, should be 90 each. And then when I put the wheel back on, it's 100 each on those. So we'll get all those things torqued, and then we can finish putting this thing back together.
Now remember, pop this little cap out before you put your wheel on. And I always leave my big socket on just so I don't forget. So I still had that set on 90, so now I took it up to the 100. Remember, I always do your wheel studs in a star pattern. Okay, and now we're gonna do the big boy. We'll take it to the 100 first, that we just did the wheel studs. Okay, now we'll go the rest of the way. All right, that should be it. We just reinstall our little cap. We're ready for a test drive. Okay, I don't know how it came through in the earlier video, but we're gonna do the same thing. Nice little stretch of road, nobody on it. Loading the left wheel, no noise. Loading the right wheel, no noise. Going about 45 miles an hour. So this thing sounds good. Let's get it back to the owner. Bye-bye, Explorer.